Hey, well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. And welcome to True Grace Bible Ministry. Again, my name is Mike Marcheski. Uh, nice to have you folks with us. Um, here in uh, America, the United States, I say that because there's people that do watch these messages from different countries. Uh, but here in America, we uh, today we celebrate Mother's Day. So I'd like to uh, wish a happy Mother's Day to the mothers out there and grandmothers alike. And uh, I guess also uh, to some fathers who are uh, single parents that both uh, are mothers and fathers. So we'd like to uh, do that at this time. Well, as we get started this morning, we see 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we rightly divide the word of truth, um, we, we need to rightly divide it so it's not confusing and to divide it so it doesn't seem like there's contradictions. Because that's what happens when we mix it together. But when we rightly divide it, it clears up the confusion and seemingly contradictions. So, as we rightly divide the word of truth, we need to divide from prophecy, which was to and for the nation of Israel, and the mystery which is two and four of the church, the body of Christ. Now, that's where the confusion comes in today. Because when we, when I say we, I will say those of us that do have an understanding of right division, and that rightly divide the word of truth, when we try to talk to others about right division, and we mention the division between prophecy and mystery, and then when we take them to Romans chapter 16, verse 25, which says, Now to him that has power to establish you according to my gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. When we take folks, and I say, you know, maybe churchgoers that we're trying to introduce right division to, and we take them to these passages and talk about the revelation of the mystery, unfortunately, these folks have no clue as to what we're talking about. And remember, we were in the same boat at one time. This is why Paul says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. Folks, we need to teach others about the revelation of the mystery just as we were taught. And I think it's very true, okay? Most people don't come to understanding right division without somebody showing them. It just doesn't happen, okay? Normally. Is it, does it happen with some folks? Yes, but normally it doesn't happen, okay? So that's our responsibility. Okay? To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That's our part of our commission, I believe. So, but the problem is when we, when we talk about the revelation of the mystery, um, most people don't understand what we're talking about. To say they have no clue would also be accurate. So, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the revelation of the mystery. And Lord willing that these messages will help you folks and maybe share these messages with others. And what I'd also like to show you right here, this little booklet that we have put together, it's called What is Included in the Revelation of the Mystery? As we go through these teachings, if anybody would like this little booklet, please contact me. You can do it through... Uh, the YouTube, through Facebook, or you can contact us at True Grace Bible Ministry at yahoo.com, or you can even call us at 570-648-9776 if you would like one of these little booklets. What is included in the revelation of the mystery? Okay, and that's what we're going to be going through for the next month or two. That we, as Folks that understand right division between prophecy and mystery, 
we can teach others as we've been taught. Okay? So, with that in said, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Okay. Paul says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So, here we see Paul was given an abundance, okay, abundance of revelations. So, what does this word abundance mean? It means great or plentiful, overflowing quantity, okay? So this tells us that Paul received an abundance, an overflowing amount, if I may, of revelations from the risen Savior. Okay? The risen Savior. So, if we see the Apostle Paul is receiving an abundance of revelations from the risen Savior, don't you think it's important that we should pay attention to what the Apostle Paul has to say? I do. Now, knowing that little bit, when did the Apostle Paul receive these revelations? Okay, because we read in Romans 16, 25 that the revelation of the mystery was kept secret since the world began. And it was hid in the mind of God. And if it was hid in the mind of God, who's the only one that knew it? God himself, right? Mm -hmm. So, when was this secret revealed? Now, we're just briefly going to go to Acts chapter 9. And we're just going to go through Paul's conversion here. In Acts chapter 9, we're only going to go to verse 15. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go to Acts chapter 22 and Acts chapter 26 to see that the Apostle Paul was a chosen vessel and that he was giving these revelations and the secret was revealed to him from the risen Savior. That's where we're going to go right now. So go to Acts chapter 9, verse 15. So Acts 9, 15 says, But the Lord said unto him, unto Paul, Go thy way, for he is a... Excuse me. He said to Ananias, excuse me, Go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So we see Paul is a chosen vessel. This is his conversion that we're looking at here briefly in Acts chapter 9. Now, we'll go to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, and we'll go to verse 12. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me, and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see the just one, and should hearest the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. So here we see the Apostle Paul uh, with an Ananias, and Ananias telling him that he is going to be this chosen vessel, and that he will know God's will, and he will see the just one, and he will hear his voice, and that he's to be a witness to all men now. Because we know that in time past, under that prophecy program, that salvation was of the Jew. Okay, the Gentiles were outcasts, weren't they? Mm -hmm. So we see a change going on here, all right? Now, Acts chapter 26, verse 13. At midday... O King, he's talking about King Agrippa, he's giving a testimony to King Agrippa, what happened back there in Acts chapter 9 on the road to uh, Damascus. 
He says, I saw in the way a light from heaven, and above the brightness of the sun, shining around about me, and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 15, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen, and those things in which I will appear unto thee. Verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive once they trust the gospel of their salvation, forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So, here we see the conversion of Saul. And we see that Paul is going to get an abundance of revelations. He's already received some things, but then the risen Savior tells him that the things that he has seen and that he will see is what he's supposed to proclaim to all men. Okay? So we have to keep that in mind. That Paul is a chosen vessel. He was given revelations from the risen Savior. Okay? Now, go to Galatians chapter 1. And here we see that Paul did not just do this on his own. Uh, you know, there's many people out there that think Paul's a false teacher. He's a false um, prophet and that he shouldn't even be in the Bible. That's bad. You know, I said this earlier that those folks that think that Paul's a false prophet and a false teacher, this may be a bold statement, but they need to get saved. They need to get saved. Uh, Galatians 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separate it <laughs> that's Romans chapter 1 but that's still good too okay uh, Paul servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated to the gospel of God my bad uh, but it does show his apostleship doesn't it but we want Galatians chapter 1 excuse me Paul an apostle not of men neither by man but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead so we see Paul's apostleship is not of man. Nobody appointed him, but it was God himself. Now, jump down to verse 11. He goes on to say, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So, we know now that the death of burial and resurrection. Paul's gospel. Okay. The death, burial, and resurrection is our plan of salvation, if you would. But in time past, under that prophecy program, the resurrection did not mean the same as it does for us in the dispensation of grace. In Acts chapter 2, verse 30, we see that Christ was raised to sit on the throne of David. See, that's prophecy. That is not according to the revelation of the mystery. That was spoken since the world began. But what Paul puts forth about the death, burial, and resurrection, that the resurrection was for our justification, Romans 4.25, was included in the revelation of the mystery. It was kept secret since the world began. Okay? So, he received this gospel by revelation. Um... And, of course, we know what he preached. He got from the risen Savior. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you work, how that by Revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. So, two things here. One, 
That word dispensation, it's a biblical word, okay? It is a biblical word. We need to use it. Dispensation, God dispensing, giving out commands, okay? It's a very, very simple uh, definition of dispensation. Uh, but what he received, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me, given to the Apostle Paul, from the risen Savior, for you, for us. And he received it by revelation, okay? So, we're, we're seeing this word revelation more and more, okay? And we're we're going to open up and we're going to see what this word revelation means here in a bit. Now, when Paul preached, we know he preached the Word of God, didn't he? He always did. 1 Thessalonians, let's see what he has to say here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when we receive the, when ye, excuse me, received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in the truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So when Paul preached, he preached the word of God. And what many people, I don't know if they don't believe it, but they, I believe they refuse to accept Okay, they refuse to accept 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. I think this is the key to it all. They don't want to accept what the Apostle Paul has to say because they still want to cling to the words of Jesus when he was on earth. And I think that's the biggest confusion within the church today, isn't it? Okay, and that's why we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And 2 Corinthians um, 5.16 says, Although we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now we know Him no more. And I'm paraphrasing that. See, we're not to preach Jesus Christ according to His earthly ministry anymore. But we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery in this dispensation of the grace of God, which the Apostle Paul received for from the risen Savior for us today. Okay? But that's where the most confusion comes in. And now, what I'm saying is most people don't want to accept the fact that what Paul writes in Romans to Philemon are commands from the Lord. See, we don't follow the Apostle Paul as uh, our Savior and, and we don't worship the Apostle Paul. We worship the risen Savior. He's the one that died for us. He shed his blood. He was buried and he rose again for our justification. He's our God. He's our Savior. Paul's just our apostle. Let's keep it that simple. But folks, when we, when we say, oh, we follow the apostle Paul, they think we worship Paul and not Jesus. But that's not true. They just don't want to accept these facts that what Paul has to say to us are the words of the risen Savior. And that's what 1 Corinthians 13, or 14, 37 says. If any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. That's pretty simple, isn't it? See, people don't want to accept that, though. Now, what does the word revelation mean? We know we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So what does revelation mean? Revelation means the act of revealing, the disclosing to others that which was unknown before. It means to uncover, to lay open, to lay open what has been closed. So, revelation is God's disclosure to man. Okay, something man did not know before. God's revealing something new to man. And he is using the Apostle Paul to do so. He is a chosen vessel. Now, let's look at an illustration of Revelation. Let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter 6. Keep your finger out here. We'll be back. But Genesis 6.13 And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, 
For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So, this is revelation to Noah, isn't it? See, nobody before Noah knew that God was going to destroy the earth. So here we see something being revealed to Noah that only God knew before it happened. This is an illustration of revelation. Um, just briefly, in verse 13, it says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come. Remember the study we did last week on flesh? Is this physical or spiritual? It's physical, isn't it? See, we have to distinguish and we have to understand our terms of uh, what they mean. And flesh is not always this sin nature, okay? But it's sometimes a physical body. But back to our study. So here we see a an, an illustration of a revelation from God. Now, a simple conclusion of what we've been talking about. Simply speaking, let's keep things simple. Revelation, therefore, is an act of God by which He directly communicates truth not known or revealed to man. Revelation is an act of God by which He directly communicates truth not known or revealed to man before. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Now, we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So what does the word mystery mean? Mystery means a secret. And in Scripture, it's a sacred secret because it's a secret from God, right? Now, again, simply speaking now, let's keep it simple. Uh, the revelation of the mystery is God revealing to man a sacred secret unknown until God made it known. It is a secret kept secret since the world began. And here now we see that Paul is a chosen vessel whom God is revealing this secret to. And the secret, the fellowship of the mystery, which is now both Jew and Gentile, in the same body. But there's no difference anymore. That's part of the revelation of the mystery. And we're going to open up um, the next few weeks or, or month, however long it takes us. Let's include it in the revelation of the mystery that the Apostle Paul received from the risen Savior for us, the church, the body of Christ. Now, uh, so who was this mystery secret again revealed to? We see that Paul was a chosen vessel, but let's see some more scripture on who this mystery, this secret was revealed to. Now, we read Ephesians chapter 3 already, but we're going to do it again. Because repetition is the mother of all learning. Ephesians 3, verse 1. Paul says, For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation, remember something that was kept secret, that was revealed, that was not known to man, but now is revealed, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. Unto me, who am less than least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So, here we see that Paul is supposed to be preaching the unsearchable riches, the unprophesied, the hidden things of God. Okay? He is the chosen vessel that he received revelation for us. Uh, turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, Who now receive in my sufferings for you? Talking about Paul. He says, Wherefore I have made a minister, in verse 23, 
who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, there's that word flesh again, physical body, for his body's sake, which is the church, where I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill, to complete the word of God, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God had made known what is the riches of this glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So here we see that it was this mystery was hid in ages and generations, but now is being revealed to the Apostle Paul for us, the church, the body of Christ. Remember, the church, the body of Christ, makes up both Jew and Gentile. There is no difference. It's all nations. Okay? All nations today. Now, let's just catch our breath here for a second. The church, okay, all these 38, 30 some thousand different denominations, okay, most of them, probably 99.9% .9 of them, have no problem accepting the fact that what God had revealed to Moses was revelation. They have no problem accepting that. And then Moses was the spokesperson, if I may, for the nation of Israel and was given the law. And then he revealed the law to the nation of Israel. They had no problem accepting that fact. But they will not accept the fact that the Apostle Paul is our Apostle in this dispensation of grace. And that's why I said earlier, they won't accept that fact. And if they would only accept that fact, just like they accept Moses, I think it would help them understand the Scriptures and it would bring unity to the Church, the Body of Christ, wouldn't it? We wouldn't have all this confusion and conflict within the church. Heck, we wouldn't even have all this conflict within right division circles. So, uh, again, we see that the law, the dispensation, the dispensing of the law was given to Moses. And that the dispensing of this grace uh, was given to the Apostle Paul. If folks could only accept that fact. Now, we've seen in Acts chapter 9, we've seen in Acts chapter 22 and 26, that Paul was a chosen vessel of God to go to all men. That he would be receiving an abundance of revelations. Okay? We know that. And that we're going to see now that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Go to Galatians chapter 1. Now, as I discussed this with my wife, and we use this word Gentile and Gentiles, what I thought would have been something that was understood, um, it took us 25 minutes. So that tells me that this word Gentile and Gentiles is misunderstood within believers and by unbelievers. I think you know, the, the common understanding is that a Gentile is somebody that's not a Jew. And again, depending on the context. In one aspect, that's true. But the word Gentile also means all nations, doesn't it? I mean, it can mean somebody that is not a Jew, but it, the context tells us the difference. But Paul now is the apostle to the Gentiles. He is the apostle to all nations, okay? including Jew. Today there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. We're all on the same level playing field. And Galatians chapter 1, verse 13, also tells us a little bit about that word heathen. Okay, So let's look at this. 
For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Galatians chapter 1, verse 14. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by His grace, verse 16, to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen. Immediately I confirmed, conferred not with flesh and blood. Now, that He might preach among the heathen. Something we need to understand here, that word heathen. Yes, it is... It coincides and is similar to the word Gentile, isn't it? But the heathen, see, Paul was to go to all men from the beginning. So, when Paul's ministry began, and he was to go to all men, that included both Jew and Gentile. Heathen are Gentiles. So today, in God's eyes, Everybody's a heathen, aren't they? All unbelievers are heathens. This is a quote-unquote Gentile world, so to speak. But it's really a heathen world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, Gentiles is all nations, which includes the Jew. So, what took us a while is the word Gentile. See, Gentile is not necessarily somebody that's not a Jew. But on the other hand, it is. So I think coming up, we may do a little study on that word Gentile. See, context, context, context is the key. Context tells us how the word's being used, just like we did with flesh. Okay? So, Paul's to go to all men. And even at the beginning of his ministry, he went to all men. And at that time, Galatians, remember, Galatians coincides here and we'll come into Acts chapter 2, 14 years later, after he called, um, coincides with Acts chapter 15, when we see uh, James, Peter, and John going to the circumcision, and Paul and Barnabas and the boys going to the uncircumcision. Um, when Paul and Barnabas went, they went to the heathen, which included Jews. All nations. So in God's eyes, there was no distinction between Jew and Gentile any longer. Everybody was a heathen. And that's all men. That's who Paul was to go to. Um, but Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. So we're going to look into the word Gentiles here coming up. I hope that little bit helped you at least think a little bit when we see the word Gentile to look at the context of what is being spoken. Now, we know that Paul is a chosen vessel. And he is the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11, verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Uh, Romans 15, verse 16. Paul tells us again. He says that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. See, Gentiles being all nations. Uh, we see in Acts chapter 22. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Right. Verse 5. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The due time is this dispensation of grace we're in. And verse 7. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ, and I lie not. And lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. 
2 uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 11 whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles meaning all nations okay remember Paul was separated to preach Jesus Christ okay that the son was revealed unto him and he was to preach to the heathen meaning all nations nations, Gentiles. Um, 2 Timothy 4, 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, and that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So we see that Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. Okay? All nations. All nations. See, Paul wasn't just a helper or a missionary. He wasn't one of the twelve, was he? No. no. The twelve were chosen to go to Israel. See, we see a little comparison. Twelve apostles, twelve tribes. One body of Christ, one apostle. Okay? So some things that we need to um, see the distinction between. And we need to designate that Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. And in this dispensation of grace. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is God our Savior. Right? But, who is our Apostle? It's the Apostle Paul. And it's him and his teachings we are to follow. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians 4. See, folks, if if we as believers in Christ Jesus who uh, understand right division, okay, we need to be able to teach others these things. Because if we don't teach them, they're not going to learn them in their church. Yes, it's not easy. But we need to study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the truth. So 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15 For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Wouldn't that be wonderful if all churches did this? They went everywhere and taught the things that the Apostle Paul received from the risen Savior. That would be fabulous. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.1 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. See, Paul followed Christ. We do not put Paul above Christ. He is our apostle, period. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Uh, Philippians 3.17 Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have for an example. So, Paul says, you know, be followers of him, and then also mark those as an example that are following Paul's teachings. So, we need to be following the teachings of the Apostle Paul from Romans to Philemon. And, but within those books, remember, we need to rightly divide them as well. Because there's some things that uh, were written during that provoking ministry, the 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Thessalonians, even some of Romans, that we don't do today because what was written after the provoking ministry ceased superseded those things. We don't speak in tongues and the gifts and the wonders and miracles. That stuff has all ceased when God stopped provoking Israel. We must remember that as well. But folks, 
The Apostle Paul is our Apostle. He received direct revelation from the risen Savior. And that we are to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And this secret was revealed to Paul after he got saved on the road to Damascus. And he received an abundance of revelations for us, the church, the body of Christ. This is what we need to be sharing with others. So hopefully this is a foundation and some basics of some things of what is included in the revelation of the mystery. So remember, if you want this book, get in contact with us, okay? So perfectly, that was a good start of getting into what is included into the revelation of the mystery. Father, we thank you. And we pray that you open hearts and give all understanding uh, of the revelation of the mystery. And that we may preach Jesus Christ accordingly. We thank you.